My name is Doris Staffel, and I've been painting since I was three years old. I just wanted to go on camera and say how much uh, Doris Staffel's meant to me in the gallery. Every two years she makes me look terrific, and she's been a good friend. And, uh, I'm very good. And she discusses the art with me, of not only of this show, but all the shows, and I think I've learned more from Doris than all the art schools I've been into and all, all the books oh I've read. Oh my lord! <laughs> she has a wonderful eye and a wonderful understanding of what's going on. And I want to say, I've been in other galleries, and I've had a show in Rome. I have never worked with anybody that I like more, that I think has a better eye and a better understanding. He's really wonderful. Um, I went to Tyler, uh, that's how I came to Philadelphia, the Fine Arts School of Temple University. The course was five years, and then I went to Iowa University and got a master's. I had two great teachers who became two great friends, uh, Mark Rothko and Philip Gustin. How did you happen across their paths? Mark Rothko was my art teacher in elementary school, and then we remained close friends until he died, and Philip Gustin taught at Iowa, and we liked each other. I heard that Philip Gustin's friends turned their back on him when he started doing figurative paintings. I don't think they turned their back on him, but his his early work was easier. It was very elegant, and his later work was very caustic, and it made people extremely uncomfortable. And there's an example of somebody that changed several times during his life until he found whatever it was that supported what he believed. Mark Rothko really didn't change from the time he started painting, but he intensified, went more deeply into the same format. Which category are you in? I don't like to be categorized. But have you changed your style over the years a lot? Or? Yes. I think most painters do, as they become less self-conscious and get more in touch with the work. They let the work begin to, in a sense, move them instead of you're moving the work. And what I think I've been dealing with, I looked at this the other day and saw that the shapes I was using are different, but they're basically the same as what I used when I was a figurative painter or when I was doing landscapes. And the basic concern, I think, is bringing opposites together, movement and stillness. And I had to learn to get out of my head in other words, to give up the conceptualizing and to be open to openness, which is not easy to do. There's security in formulating what you're going to do, but it's not, it's not deep enough. The real juice is after you go through the practice. Richard told me that you are a Buddhist. Has that affected your uh, art? Of course. How? made me aware that I needed to shut up. <laughs> to be present. And also, to be grateful. What are you grateful for? <laughs> what are you grateful for? I'm grateful to be able to make these movies and I have a great wife and family. And Well, I would say the same thing. I'm grateful for the life I live. I'm grateful for my family. I'm Howard Blitman. I'm Doris's brother. What was she like as a kid? She was very, very romantic, very much uh, aggressive in what she wanted to do and how she did it. And she was a warm and very wonderful lady. Is she an older sister or a younger sister? She is sister? my older sister. We're five and a half years apart. Uh, so she took care of you? She sort of kept me out of trouble, yes. <laughs> And we used to, she was the only one that came down to visit me. I remember many, many years ago when I was commissioned in service. And what did your parents think of her becoming an artist? 
Well, uh, I think in the beginning they were concerned, but I think they sort of grew to it and found out that it was a wonderful thing for her to do and very pleased when she went to art school for college in Philadelphia, Tyler. And she's had a pretty good career? She's had a wonderful career. And she's done some remarkably wonderful work. You've been described as the nicest person in the world. Really? She is the absolute nicest person I've ever met. Now is your niece. Really? <laughs> oh, well, every time I see Dara, she takes me up to her studio and she says, here, pick something out. And I love to go home with my little memento and uh, hang it on my wall or in my room, and I think of Doris. My name is Megan Staffel, and I'm the daughter of Doris Staffel. She was a wonderful mother. She told me lots of stories, gave me lots of material to write about. I'm a writer. When I was growing up, there were few mothers who worked, and my mother taught painting at what was then called the Philadelphia College of Art. She's was always very social and engaged in things outside of the house and so there was never a dull moment with my mother. I think her example showed, showed me how to have a creative life. She worked constantly. She was, and, and even now she's happiest when she's drawing or painting. I'm Annabeth Marks. I'm Darcy's granddaughter. And you're a painter as well? Yeah. What do you think of the show? I think it's beautiful. Yeah, I think the paintings look really amazing. Is she a role model for you? Yes, definitely. Your mother's a novelist. Mm -hmm. You're an artist. Your grandmother is an artist. Yeah. Is, does art just run in the family, do you think? Or? Yeah, I think being creative does. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Hey, very nice to talk to you. Yeah. Good luck with your show. Thank you. And I'm grateful for the stroke itself, the way things are made. What do you mean the stroke? Well, my work is very curvilinear. It's more uh, female because it's the very few straight lines or diagonal lines. If somebody else said this, I wouldn't like it. But it, it has a female quality. But when females are at their best, I think, one of the things that they allow is allowing to be present, not to be controlling. Are you a Mama Grizzly? I'm sorry? Oh, no, never mind. It's the tea, the Sarah Palin refers to herself as a Mama Grizzly. Oh, Jesus. I mean, good Lord, Buddha. <laughs> Just joking. She's not a joke, yeah. unfortunately. Are you hopeful for the world or? No. Are you a bodhisattva? Good God, no. Do you, are you <laughs> ending up in that direction? I couldn't answer that question. I don't know where I'm going. I know where I don't want to be. Where's that? See you tonight. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Who was that? That's my best friend, Xiaomei Lao. And what's her story? She comes from Taiwan, and she really is a collector of um, Oriental art, Chinese, Japanese, almost everything. And she has an incredible sensibility. And you were just saying where you don't want to end up. Where was that? I don't think I can answer that. Okay. Okay, George, thank you very much. You're very well. And may the next 89 years be just as positive Thanks. as it's okay. Good. <laughs> It's a mutual admiration. Society. It is. It really is. <laughs> um, I think it's time for you guys to get a room. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, do you know Jackie Cotter? Very well. T two sisters in the army of female art? <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it that way, but I think you're right. <laughs>